Good morning, church. Welcome back to church. Welcome home. It's a joy to share the word of God with you this morning. And I'll title the message this morning as God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. And I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 to 9. Follow me, if you may. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be the people and His treasured possessions. The Lord did not set His affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath He swore to your ancestors that He brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He said this, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and kept His commandments. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you will challenge us and assure us and speak to us with your word and through your word this morning. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there are some countries in the world where the electric supply is not at all reliable. You know, I remember... Uh, a few of us went to minister on our mission work in India. The electricity cut off for half an hour, every hour. You know, can you imagine how unreliable it is? But thank God, our electric, electricity supply in Malaysia is very faithful, very good. You know, except twice it happened, there's a total blackout for a day in Malaysia. Apart from that, we are good. Even people, people are not nearly as reliable. You know, never expect anything from anyone because you know why? They will only let you down if your hope is so high on people. Electricity isn't 100% reliable. People aren't as well. But what about God? What about Jesus Christ? Do we believe that He is faithful? Have we ever been disappointed enough times that we would want to say, never expect anything from God? All over in the Bible, over and over again, that the Bible tells us that God is faithful. You remember one time when God revealed Himself to Moses in Exodus 34 verse 6, the Bible said this, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Psalms 105, verse 5 adds this, His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalms 117, verse 2, continue with this, The faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. You know, this morning, I would like to think about the faithfulness of God and encourage you to rely on His faithfulness. Whatever you are going through, whatever you are facing, you rest assured that God is faithful. I want to share with you two things. And in between the two things, there are three things inside. I want to share with you about the faithfulness of God. Number one, the nature of God's faithfulness. The nature of God's faithfulness. God does not decide to be faithful as when He lied. God never decides, I'm faithful today, tomorrow I do not know. The first thing we need to understand in thinking about God's faithfulness is that God is faithful to His name. God is faithful to His character. God is faithful to His Word. The faithfulness of God is deeply rooted and is an integral part of who God is. 
God is faithful because of who He is. Let me go into the three things and talk about the faithfulness, the nature of God's faithfulness. Number A, He is true to His name. God is faithful because He is true to His name. God is very concerned for the reputation of His name. In Psalms 106 verse 8, we read, you, Yet He saved them for His name's sake to make His mighty power known. God does very, God very own reputation is a state in all that He does. His name reveals who He is. And He is consistent with His name as an expression of His reputation. God is who He is. When He say it, He will do it. He is faithful to His name. He is consistent with His name because His name is His reputation. In Genesis 16 verse 13, Hagar, who fled from Sarai because she treated her poorly, met with God and discovered the name of God as the one who sees me. He's one who sees what I go through. God saw and God is aware and God sees every part of the journey that we go through throughout this past one over here. It's not easy. But God sees you, what you're going through, what you're facing in your life. God's name is the one who sees Hagar discovered that when she was an outcast both from her family and from the family where God was at work God saw her God is the one who sees and is faithful to this name of His I am who I am I am El Elyon the Lord who sees in seeing all who bow down and oppress all who suffer, all who are in pain, all who are in difficulties, all who are in financial challenges in life. God sees all of you in your difficult time. When God introduced Himself to Moses, Moses wanted to know His name so that He could give Israel a name they could rely on. And God revealed Himself as I am who I am. Because God could be trusted as the one who is God over all, who is the highest rules or ruler over all. Moses knew deep within his heart when God said, I am who I am. That he could, he could go to the enemy's camp, Pharaoh's camp, with the message of God because he knew that God would, would go with him. He knew that God would protect him. He knew that God will do a miracle. He knew that God is faithful. God is true to his name because he is. We can know that he's faithful. Amen. Amen. The second area in the nature of God is this. He is true to His character. He is true to His character. The faithfulness of God is also seen in the fact that God is true to His character. He is good. He is kind. He is loving. What is the character of God? One of the most powerful words to describe God's character is the Hebrew word hazet. The word hazet. It is usually translated steadfast love. God's love for you and I, God's concern for you and I, God's care for you and I is steadfast, is constant. Never cease loving you and I. No matter who we are, no matter what we have done, no matter how many times we fail Him, He is faithful. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 9, we read this, we read this, Know therefore, the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God. Keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commands. This is one of many verses 
in the scripture which connect God's faithfulness to His loving kindness. These verses reveal that God is filled with compassion. God is filled with love. If God is true to His character, we can count on God's faithfulness to His love, to His compassion, to His care for you and for me. What are some other aspects of God's character? That God is one who saves, and if He is consistent with His character, therefore we can count on God to save, to provide, and to protect, and to take care of you and me. We also have to do our part as well. Keep strict, strictly to the SOP required verse. He is known as a God who is upright. Therefore, we can trust that God will always be constant. God is always consistent with what is right. Protecting us is right. Loving us is right. Healing us is right. Providing for us is right. We can trust Him on that. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4 says, He is the rock. His works are perfect. And all His ways are just a faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is He. Amen. 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 The third part on the, net, on the nature of God's faithfulness is this. He is true to His Word. He is true to His Word. You know, another perspective from which we can look at God's faithfulness is that He is true to His Word. You know, especially in times of difficulty, in time of pandemic, in time of career, businesses, and livelihood, in times of, of, of the struggles and the challenges we go through in life through this pandemic, we need to know one thing. All that God said in His Word are all yes and amen. There are 7,000 over promises in the Word of God for you and I. You know what are the promises of God? What is God's Word? His faithfulness is that when God says something, He does what He says. The language which is most often used in regard to the Bible is the language of covenant. God has established a covenant with His people. The most significant covenant which God made in the Old Testament was also the covenant He made with Moses and the people of Israel at Mount Sinai. We read just now in Deuteronomy 7 verse 9, Emphasize that God keeps His covenant of love. God never stops, never ceases loving you, never ceases concerned about, never ceases providing for you and I, never ceases holding on to our hand and leading us through. Sometimes in life, it seems to be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, shadow of struggles, sh shadows of challenges and pain. But you know what? God is faithful to His Word. We could count on God's faithfulness because it was consistent with His character of love. God not just made a covenant to the children of Israel, God made a covenant to you and me as well when you and I receive Him into our hearts as our God and personal Savior. He said to you and I, I will not, I will never, 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 never leave you. Nor will I ever, ever, ever forsake you. For I am with you. I will go ahead with you, of you and I will take care of you. Amen. Your God is a faithful God. Don't ever doubt Him even once. Isaiah 25 verse 1 says, O Lord, You are my God. I will exalt You and praise Your name. For in perfect faithfulness, You have done marvelous things. Things planned long ago. 
Thus we can know that whatever God has promised, He will do. Why? Because He is faithful. He is faithful to the covenant He has made. He is a covenant-making God. Hallelujah! Amen! The faithfulness of God goes very deep. It goes into the very nature. It goes into the very character of God. God is faithful in all His words because He is faithful. Amen. Never once for my past 41 years as a Christian, God ever failed me. He de- seems delayed some time to me, but He's always faithful. Amen. So we have learned about this. God, you are faithful. That the nature of God's faithfulness is that He is true to His name. He is true to His character. He is true to His word. Let's go to the second thing we're going to learn about is that we can rely on God's faithfulness. We can rely on God's faithfulness. If God is thus true to Himself, we have every reason to rely on Him. What does it mean to rely on the faithfulness of God? What does it mean for you and I to rely on the, on the faithfulness of God? Three things, very quickly. One, trust His purposes. Trust His purposes. God is not like, you know, like someone today, He planned something in His life and tomorrow He changed. Sometimes in our plan, we change all the time. Our friends, our parents, our children, sometimes we, we say, this is what we're going to do for our life. This is what we're going to do for our situation. But when tomorrow we wake up, we change. And the next day we change again and we change again. But God's plan is stable. God's plan is consistent. God never changed. God does not act randomly according to His whims. God has a plan and we can know that He will be consistent with the plan. God, God's plan is to create a people who will follow Him. Because of sin, man was separated. Because of God, Jesus so loved the world. Jesus came, lived among men, died for the sin of man, rose again on the third day. He saved us. He forgave us of our sin when we come to Him. And He brings us back to Him. Why? Why? Because God has a plan for you, has a purpose for you, And for me, and God will always be faithful to those purposes He had for your life and for my life. We can have confidence that He will always act consistently with those plans. Therefore, two things, take note. We can trust that He will always forgive those who repent. Amen? Number two, we can trust that He will always make those who come to Him into His children. Amen. See the faithfulness of God to His purpose and we who can rely on Him is beautifully expressed in Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He who did not spare His own Son but gave Him up for all us all, how will He not also along with Him graciously give us all things. You know, whatever we go through in life, this past one over years, God has a plan, a plan to teach you and I to rely on Him, a plan to mold you and I, our character, our life, to the way He wants us to be. A plan to expand you and I, a, a, a plan to strengthen you and I, a plan to build you and I up a plan to prepare you for a great future. There will be many, many other things will come along the way apart from COVID-19. His plan in our life is always to lift us up, to build us up and to prepare us for tomorrow. He has a plan, it's a purpose what we are going through today. Don't give up on God. Don't, Don't throw in the tower. His grace is ever sufficient for you and I. Every one of us are going through very difficult times. Some of us are sick. Some of us are struggling with depression and mental health. Some of us, maybe our career is fading and, and our businesses is declining. Our finances is, you know, coming slower than we expected. 
Some of us are locked in. But you know what? In spite of all this that we are going through, that God is still faithful. Amen? He still is consistent with His plan for your life and my life. Amen. We can rely on God's promise, faithfulness. First, by trusting His plan and purpose for us. Two, by trusting His promises. By trusting His promises. Since that is the nature of God, we can therefore also trust His promises. God has made many promises to us and we can see many times in the past when God, when God has kept His word. When God promised Abraham an heir, a child through his life, it took a long, long time before that promise was fulfilled. But it was fulfilled even when it seemed humanly impossible. God promised the children of Israel a land. And after hundreds of years, He fulfilled the promise as well. God never go back on His promise, not like us. Sometimes in life, we make so many promises to God. We make so many promises to people. We make promises, God, if you do this for me, if you do that for me, if you come provide for me, if you heal me, if you bless my businesses, I will do this and do this and do this and do that for you. But many times we went back on our word. But God never once, never once did God ever went back, gone back on His word. How many times we make promises to friends and, and, and friends or brothers and sisters make promises to us, but we went back on our word. We never kept those promises. What are the promises that God has made for us? What are the promises that God has made for us? Because God is faithful, we can trust those promises that He has made to you from His Word. For example, we can trust the promise of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. What is that? No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. God is faithful and He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. We can also share the hope of Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will bring it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. If God is this thus faithful to His promises, then we can be sure that He is faithful to us even when we need to go through difficult times like what we have been going through and am still going through difficult times times of challenges. If God has been faithful in the past, if God has been faithful last year, if God has been faithful last month, if God has been faithful last week, God is still faithful today. Amen? He's still faithful today and tomorrow and evermore. <coughs> Don't let the enemy of your souls whisper into you. Don't let people around you. Don't let circumstances and situations of life Speak lies to you about your God and about my God and about His faithfulness. He is faithful to us even when we need to go through difficult times. And this is the message of Psalms 119.75. It said this, I know, O Lord, that your laws are righteous and in faithfulness, you have affect, afflicted me. You have allowed me to go through these difficult times. He allowed. But yet at the same time, He promised He will be with you. He will keep you. He will go through with you. And lastly, the third thing about why we can rely on the promises of God is that trusting His care. Trusting His care. When Abraham sent his servant to find a bride for his son, 
Isaac. We see something of the care of God. He was lonely for some years and God still concerned for his loneliness and God provided for him. And after a long journey and some difficult negotiations, his servant returned to Isaac with Rebekah. That's why he said in Genesis 24, verse 27, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. He has never abandoned. As for me, the Lord has helped me, uh, led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. You know what? The Bible says, God has never failed Abraham. What about Jacob? Jacob too. God has not failed Abraham, has not failed Joseph, uh, uh, Isaac. He will not fail jo Jacob as well. Jacob also experienced God's faithfulness. After 20 years away from home, we read in Genesis 20, 32, verse 10, this. He said this, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I only my staff when I crossed this Jordan. But now I have become two groups. He said, You know what? I was poor that you make me rich. I was alone, you provided me families. I was not worthy, but you know what? You took good care of me. Also, it has been for many people throughout Scripture. Throughout the ages We too can trust That God will care for us Amen Hallelujah God will provide for us God will take care of everything Amen Let me close with this When the thought that God is true To His name To His character To His word Is applied You know what happened? We find consistently that we can trust His purpose, the things that He allows us to go through, trust His promises, that what He said in His Word, He will hold on to it. And lastly, we can trust His care. He will come true for you and for me. Amen? 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9 say, God is faithful. Who has called you into fellowship with His Son? Jesus Christ, our Lord. One more time, God is faithful. If He has saved you, He has called you into a relationship and a fellowship with His Son, remember one thing, He is faithful. Amen? Amen? God is faithful, but our ability to trust Him is not as faithful. One more time, God is faithful, but our ability to trust Him is not as faithful. When God come to our mind a bit slow, when God did not provide this and provide that and do this and do that for us, we gave up on God. We were not faithful, but God was ever faithful. My hope and my goal for myself is to develop a deeper trust in God each day of His faithfulness. When things don't go my way, I want to learn to trust that God will lead me through the disappointments in life. When death seems to gain the upper hand, I want to trust that God will bring life and healing and deliverance. When people disappoint and fail me, I want to trust that God will never, 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 never fail me. When I do not see God at work in my situation and my circumstances or in certain situation, I want to rest in the peace of God that He knows it all about that all is well. I pray that we will be able to learn to trust God in this way. Amen. Every one of us, to trust God in this way. Psalms 71 verse 22. Let me close with this psalm. Psalm 71 verse 22. 
I will praise you with the harp for my faithfulness, for your faithfulness, oh my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. The Lord, my God, is faithful. He is all the time. Amen. Amen. All the time. Amen. You know, I want you to stand where you are, even in your home. And I want you to worship the Lord with us. There's one song that entitled, Never Once. Never Once. Very well written by a great Christian singer by the name Matt Redman. Matt Redman. And this song, it says, when we are standing on this mountaintop, looking just how far we come, knowing that every step you were in, the scars and the struggles on the way of our journey in life, never once, never once did we ever walk alone. Never once, never once did you leave us on our own. You know why? Because He is faithful. God, you are faithful. Can I invite you as Pastor Kendrick and myself sing this song that you will sing along with us and just commit yourself to God and just, and just soak in, soak in the reality that your God and my God, He is faithful. Never once have left us alone. Never once, never once, He left us on our own. Amen. Join us as we worship the Lord together. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done. Knowing every victory is your power in us Scars and struggles on the way But with joy our hearts can say Yes, our hearts can say Join us, never once Never once, once. Never once did we ever walk alone Ever once did you leave on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Standing, oh, let's sing it again. standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done. Knowing that for every victory, your power in us, stars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, Lord, yes, our hearts can say. Come on, join us, never once, never once did we ever walk alone, never once. Did you leave us on our Lord? You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful. We can breathe in. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Stars and struggles on the way, but in joy our hearts can say, Never once did we ever walk alone. Caring by your constant grace, help me in your perfect peace. Never once, 
No, we never walk alone again. Scars and struggles on the way, but we enjoy our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Carried by your constant grace, held within your perfect peace. Never once. No, we never walk alone. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you lead us on our own. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Once again, never once. Walk alone. Never once did you leave us on my own. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Every step, every step, you are breathing in your grace. And that's right. Every day is the grace of God. We'll be yes, every out day we can sing and praise God. You are faithful. God, you are faithful. In every step, we are breathing in your grace. Evermore, we'll be breathing out your praise. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful. You know, brothers and sisters, we do not know what you are going through, what you are facing. We do not know what is ahead of you, what is in front of you. We may not understand the struggles that you are going through. We may not understand the sickness that you struggle with. We may not understand the difficulties and the struggles in your relationships, in your finances, in your career. We may not understand. Your businesses is failing. We may not understand. We may not understand all that you are going through in life. One thing I can tell you is, God knows. God understand. God is faithful. Yes. Can you hold on? Can you hang on? Can you trust God? God, you are faithful. Yes. You are faithful. You are ever faithful. You have never left us once on our own. You have never abandoned us. You have walked with us. You have been the silent host, the silent master, the silent Lord in our heart and our spirit. You are walking us through. You are going through with us in our lives. Can I ask of you today? To sing with us the chorus, and whatever you are facing, whatever you are going through, and just bring it and lay it at the feet of Jesus. I want you to confess. I want you to confess, God. I on my own, I just can't. On my own, I just can't. I need you. I need you. I need you in my life. I just want to trust you. I just want to. Soak in the truth, the reality that you are a faithful God, Lord. Never once we were alone. You are faithful. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once. Did you leave us on our own? Yes, yes. Leave it to the Lord. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful. Scars and struggles. Every step we be heading in Your grace. Evermore we'll be breathing 
out your praise. You are faithful, God. You One more time, faithful. every step. Every step we are breathing in your grace. Every morning we be breathing out your praise. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. You yes, Lord, you are faithful. Yes, Lord. Never once, never once did we ever walk alone through this past one over years. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful. God, you are faithful. Let's pray, shall we? Can I ask of you to just surrender the burden, surrender the difficulties, surrender the challenges, surrender the pain, the scars, the struggles that you're going through to the Lord sicknesses that you're dealing with you're struggling with in your life will you surrender to the Lord and say God you are faithful will you just take 20 seconds where you are to pray right now and surrender to the Lord Would you allow me to pray with you and for you? Our Father, right now, we are thankful your word reminds us again and again and again. You are faithful. God, you are faithful. Never once have you ever left us alone. Never once, Lord, you have left us on our own. You are still as faithful as ever, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Lord, we pray whatever each of us are going through in our lives, that you will come through in a miraculous way. You will do a miracle. You will work a miracle in every one of our lives. You will heal. You will heal. You will heal all those who are not well. You will heal all those who are sick. Heal us. Heal us, Lord. Will you receive the healing of God upon yourself right now and rise up heal? Amen. If it's a financial situation, it is a hurtful situation, it's a relationship problem, if it is a mental health issue, will you just pray and say, God, I receive the healing. Father, you heal all these areas of our lives as we commit ourselves to you. This we pray and this we ask. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, for those of you who are listening to the preaching of God's word this weekend, if you have not come to know Jesus yet and you want to receive Jesus into your heart as your God and personal Savior, it's a good time to know that God is faithful and He will help you through, He will guide you through, He will protect you, He will provide for you, He will heal you. If you're interested in receiving Jesus into your heart as your God and personal Savior, follow me in this short prayer to receive Jesus. Amen. Close your eyes for a while and bow your head for a while and just follow me. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you I ask of you to forgive me of all my sins. I invite you into my heart to be my God and my personal Savior. Jesus, I commit my life 
totally to you and ask you to help me, lead me, and teach me to walk with you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now you have received Jesus. We would love to get in contact with you. Send us a PM in our Facebook or online that we can reach out to you or give us a call from our website to find a number. Amen. God bless you. You have a great day and a great week. Amen. God bless.